satisfied with just a cottage below a little silver and a little
Walk on, sister. Walk on, children. You gotta roll with the rock to the shifting sand. Walk on through the valley. Walk on up the mountain. Walk on through the wilderness if you ever gonna make it through the promised land. Walk on. If you're worried from the weight of the world on your back, walk on. If your stumble get up, don't worry about that, walk on. Don't keep your eye on the narrow road, walk on. Someday it'll turn into streets of gold, walk on, brother. Walk on, sister. Walk on, children. You gotta roll with the rock to the shifting sand. Walk on through the valley. Walk on up the mountain. Walk on through the wilderness. If you ever gonna make it through the promised land, walk on. Well, we're all walking the same old road. We're just wearing different boots. You better lay down that heavy load. You gotta keep on walking or the devil's gonna get you. Walk on, brother. Walk on, sister. Walk on, children. You gotta roll with the rock through the shifting sand. Walk on through the valley. Walk on up the mountain. Walk on through the wilderness. If you ever gonna make it through the promised land, walk on. Walk on, brother. Walk on, sister. Walk on. Children, you gotta roll with the rock through the shifting sand. Walk on through the valley, walk on up the mountain, walk on through the wilderness. If you ever gonna make it through the promised land, walk on, walk on, walk on. Walk on, brother. Walk on, sister. Walk on, children. You gotta roll with the rock to the shifting sand. Walk on through the valley. Walk on up the mountain. Walk on through the wilderness. If you ever gonna make it through the promised land, walk on. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long 
Thank you, Van, for leading us, and I think that last song should express everyone's desire that the Holy Spirit just fill this place. Knowing that we can have the very presence of God here, and He is here because He made us a promise that where two or three are gathered together in His name, He's going to be there with us, and He surely is here this morning. So good to see each of you. Beautiful day that God has blessed with us, that we might come together and to worship and to honor Him in a time of worship and praise. Why don't you take your Bibles this morning, if you would. If you have your Bibles, not, it'll be on the screen. Turn with me to the Gospel according to Luke, in Luke the 15th chapter. I want to share a message this morning that if I should give it a title, I guess I would have to entitle it the Hog Pen Philosophy, or the Philosophy of the Hog Pen, because that's what the story is about. It's about a young Jewish boy who found himself working in the hog pen. Found your place? You know it, the story of what we sometimes call the prodigal son. Let me share with you some thoughts about the hog pen philosophy. Beginning in verse 11, And he said, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered together all and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would twain would have fain have filled his body belly with the husk that the what swines did eat, and no man gave unto him. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I'll rise, and I'll go to my father, and I'll say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the hired servants. And he rose. He came to his father. But when he had a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran and fell upon his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. We all are familiar with the story of the young man and his desires and his life. But as I read that story, I thought about the day in which we live. And how it, how it relates to where we are in our society today and in life today. And I thought, you know, there's a philosophy there that comes out of this story. And it all relates back to the hog pen. So if you listen, I'll try to make this brief this morning and share with you three ideologies of the philosophy of the hog pen. And three things or directions that it will lead you. Number one, when I begin to read this, I begin to see that the young man comes to his father, <clears throat> and he simply says to the father, you owe me something. No, it's not in that words in, the, in, the, in your Bible, but that's exactly what he meant. You owe me something. The hog pen philosophy tells us that the world owes us. That's the society that we're living in. We're living in a society today that wherever we, we feel like that because I'm here, somebody owes me something. I shouldn't be here. The world owes me something just because I am here. We're hearing this so much in, in, in racial situations where there is the demand for, you know, for equality or whatever you want to call it, but it, it's almost like we owe everybody something. And out of, that same, out of that same philosophy, we begin to become dependent then upon others. We are quickly moving in the direction of a socialist government whereby we would have to be dependent upon the government. They're leading us in that direction. 
it becomes kind of a, a welfare state where you are totally dependent now upon what the government can do for you. But that's not the way our government is set up. It's to be a government of the people and by the people and for the people. But that's not the direction we're headed today. We have developed an attitude today in, hey, the world owes me something, or somebody owes me something, or maybe our kids back to the parents saying, hey, you owe me something. You brought me into this world, therefore you owe me something. Without ever thinking just how grateful they should be for what the parents have done for them. Yeah, you know, the philosophy of the hog pen is that, hey, you owe me something. I'm entitled to it. Give it to me. The second thing that the philosophy of the hog pen says to us is I want what's mine and I want it now. That's what he was saying. He said, Dad, you know, I, I, I've got this coming to me, but I want it now. And that's the way you are. We're living in an instant society today. We want everything quick. Well, quick. We find instant coffee, instant tea. We find instant meals. Boy, I've enjoyed those things too. Just pop them in the oven. A minute later, you're ready to eat. But anyway, we're living in a society that, that's what it is. I want it, and I want it now. And I'm fearful that's filtrating into our younger generation today. Whereby we want everything, but we don't want to have to go through what mom and dad did or granddad and grandmom had to go through. We want it now. But that's not the way it works. But the young man goes to his father and he said, Look, I know you owe me something because it's entitled to me and I'm going to have it someday, but I want what mine and I want it. I want it right now. Right now. Very impatient. Very impatient. And I'm very impatient about a lot of things, but, but this in life in general, this is what we want. We want it now. Have you experienced that? Uh, maybe, maybe you're like that. Hey, look, I, I want what's mine, but I want, I want it now. I don't want to have to wait for it. It might be a few years before his dad's going to kick the bucket and he'd get the inheritance. So just give it to me now. And that's the way we are today. That's the society we're living in. That's part of the ideology of the hog pen philosophy. Is that we want it, maybe we want it now. And then the other one is so dangerous. The other one says, you're entitled to enjoy life. And enjoy all of it that you can. Get all the gusto. You've got one life to live. Live it to the fullest. Well, that's what happened. What the Bible shares with us now, that his dad did just what he asked him. His dad gave unto him his inheritance then. In fact, he divided it between him and his older brother. Now, the older brother kept on working. But the young man who wanted it then because it was owed to him, took what the Bible says and waited a few days. And he decided... Hey, I'm going to live it up. Maybe he looked at his bank account. Maybe he looked at his wallet, whatever it was, and he had the money there. I am going to live it up. And so he does. And he leaves his family. And he leaves his friends. And the Bible says he goes into a foreign land. And what does it say? And there he wasted all that he had. He wasted his whole living, his whole inheritance. It was gone because he wanted to party hardy. He wanted to live a life fullest as he could. That's what the philosophy of the hog pen tells us to do. If it feels good, do it. Don't worry about anything else. If, if, if it's your life, you live it the way you want to live it. And if you want to indulge in all these things, then just have at it. And he did. He must have had a lot of friends while he had a lot of money. They must have gathered around him and he had a great time. But you see, there's something about the philosophy of the hog pen that we need to understand. On the surface, it may look good. And it may be enticing because that's what the devil does. He paints us a very rosy picture of everything. But the hog pen philosophy once it is accepted and put into his life then it does something else and the first thing that it does is it leads you away from family and friends it'll separate you you get involved in all the things that the world has to offer 
You begin to do the drug scene. You begin to do the sex scene. You begin to do the alcohol. You begin to do all these things that the world paints such a rosy picture of, and you're going to find that it's going to drive a wedge right between you and your family and friends. And that's what happened. It led him away from his friends that he had, real friends. It led him away from his family, from a family that loved him, cared for him, and even indulged in giving him what he wanted, and it led him completely away from that. How many times in my ministry have I seen people who've applied the hog pen philosophy in life find their whole family shattered because of it? It leads you away from the family. It separates you. Because suddenly the only thing that matters in your life is what's mine and what I want and what I'm going to do, and I don't care who I hurt doing it. And he left. It led him away from his family. The second thing I think you need to understand is in the hog pen philosophy, when you, when you adopt it into your life, it's going to lead you down trails that you would normally never go down. It's going to lead you down some trails that you wouldn't bother to go place. You're going to find your place, yourself in places where you would never have thought that you would be there. Right? Yeah, it does. This young man got into that far country, spent everything he had. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know if they had pawn shops back then, but he must have pawned his family ring because it was gone. And that was precious to him. It should have been. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he finds himself where no Jewish boy would have ever found himself. He found himself in the hog pen. The Bible says it came so bad. There was a famine in the land. His money's all gone. His friends are all gone. He is forsaken. He is starving. And what the Bible says is this young Jewish boy goes and hires out to feed the pigs now nothing wrong with feeding pigs i like to eat pigs too there's nothing wrong with that that wasn't the problem but it was a problem for him he would have never been there and all of a sudden it had gotten so bad till the bible says he was about ready to eat the slop that the pigs were eating and that's where it carries you it leads you down paths that you'd never go normally it puts you in those places that you would never be normally. And I, I find that so true in life today. When, when, when working with people and counseling with people, and I find how many of them have drifted so far away and followed their own plans and ideas until finally they realize that they have been places they never would have gone before. They find them places in bars and places where Perhaps in life they would never go. They find themselves indulging in things that normally they would never have thought to have done. Because the hog pen philosophy leads you there. And the third thing that it does for you, it leaves you empty and broken. I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says there's a way, there's a way of life that man has that seems to be good. But the end thereof is death, is destruction. What happens with the hog pen philosophy that we adopt, where we're going to get everything out of life that we can, we want it instantly, and we want everything that anybody owes us. We find ourselves there all alone sometimes. I've been with people when they've hit the bottom. When they reached the point that this young man had reached, the hog pen philosophy had left him broken, empty, hungry. I've been with drunkards. Oh, oh let me be politically correct. Those who abuse alcohol. I've been with them when I've held their hand and watched them water in the floor and see the brokenness that it's brought into their life. I've heard them cry out for drugs that they demanded and couldn't get. I've seen what it does to the lives of people. I've, I've tried to counsel with couples 
whose marriages is breaking apart because someone or the other thought that they were going to follow whatever they wanted and whatever they desire. I want you to know something today. If you're trying to live the life that the world places out there for you to live, it's going to leave you empty and broken every time. To the point this young man had reached. He was ready to eat the slop the pigs were eating. I want you to understand something, folks. The devil's feeding a lot of people slop today. And we're eating it. What's the solution? What's the solution? Well, I can only share with you what happened in this life and what I believe would happen in the life of anyone. What the Bible says next that happens, he's sitting there or standing there or whatever he is in that old hog pen, and gosh, all of a sudden, he remembers some things, good things. The Bible says he remembered, and he said to himself, you know, it wasn't like this back home. I wonder today if we knew the statistics across America today of the number of young people who have run away from home seeking to find a better life ends up on the street corners peddling themselves or peddling drugs or involved in drugs. And I wonder how many times they would think within their own self it wasn't so bad at home after all. But it's hard to go back. You don't know if you'll be accepted or not. You don't know what the other people are going to say. But this young man, I remember what it was like. I mean, even our servants had plenty to eat, and I'm starving. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up out of this hog pen, and I'm going to go back to my dad I'm going to eat some crow okay but that's all right I'm going to go back to dad and I'm going to tell dad dad I'm sorry that's where it begins we call it repentance I'm going to go back to dad and I'm going to tell him I'm sorry and dad I, I have sinned I have sinned against heaven and against you what was that word he said I have sinned that's the hog pen philosophy fulfilled. It brings forth sin. I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Y'all want you to see some brokenness here. I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy. I'm going to get up, go back to my dad, tell him that, and see if he would be gracious enough even just to make me like one of the hired hands. I got good news for you. When you reach that point in your life, and maybe you have, and you're willing to turn your back upon everything else and turn it towards God, because you see, the Father in this story that Jesus gave represents Him. It represents Him. That prodigal son represents you and I. And when we when we've reached that point in our life and we realize we've blown it, hey, here's what we've got to do. We have got to repent, turn to the Father. Go to the Father. Go to God. He did just that. Got up out of the pig pen. Made it all the way back home. Here's a beautiful scene. His dad's there. His dad's, maybe he's looking down that old cobblestone pathway where his son left. I don't know. But I do know this, what the Bible says. Before the son could get to him, he saw the son and he recognized him. He recognized him in, in all of the filth of the pig pen. He still recognized his son. I want you to understand something. God knows you. He recognizes you. No matter what your condition is, God knows you, and he loves you. 
Father didn't give him time to get there. The Bible says he ran and he met his son. Listen, if you're willing to come to God, he's willing to meet you. He's willing to open up his arms and receive you. He wants you to come to him. And he ran and he kissed him. And the old boy, the son began to say, Dad, look, I bet he was nervous, don't you? I bet he was trembling almost. And Dad, I, I've sinned against heaven, against you, and I'm no more worthy to be called your son. He didn't get to put the last sentence in. The dad stopped him. And he said, man, look here. Hey, somebody get a robe and put on my son. Somebody get our family ring and put it back on him. Somebody put some shoes on his feet. He's barefooted. And somebody go get that old calf we've had up in the lot and kill it. We're going to have a party today. Why? Because my son was dead, and now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. Listen, what the Bible teaches us, if you are living in sin today, separated from God, you are dead, spiritually dead in sin. And when we come to him, he makes us alive. He gives us life. He breathes the breath of the Holy Spirit within us. Oh, praise God. But you have to get up out of the hog pen. <laughs> and you have to come. And if you're a child of God, let me tell you. Don't say, just because I'm saved, I would never fall for that. You've opened yourself up to the devil. And we are just as guilty sometimes as believers of beginning to want what's ours and wanting it now and living our own life and not wanting God to have the control, we have to stop that. And we have to yield our life over to him and say, here, it's your life. In fact, it is. The Bible says you're no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we're to live that life that represents the living Christ within us. Get up out of the hog pen and come to the Father. And he will greet you because he loves you. And he loved you enough that he sent Jesus to die for you. To invite you to come to him. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation. I'm going to ask the band if they would come at this time. And I'm going to ask you now then, where are you today? In your relationship with the Father, who are you? Where are you in your relationship with your family? Where are you in your relationship with your friends? Have you allowed the philosophy of the hog pen to begin to creep in and separate you from family and friends? Or maybe you felt like I've just put together me a whole new set of friends. Well, I want you to know that whatever it is with appealing to bring them to you, when it's gone, they're gone. They'll not stay. There is a friend, though, that the Bible says sticks closer than a brother, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He will encourage you. He will strengthen you. He would lead you down the right path, not the wrong path, and he'll lead you eventually into his presence in that beautiful place called heaven. Don't be led astray by the philosophy of the hog pen. Put your life in the hands of Jesus. Let's pray.